Are you looking for an easy woodworking project? This spiral Christmas tree is cheap and easy to build, and I'm going to show you how. Welcome to my wood shop. My name's Brett. If you have a couple of 2x4s laying around, you already have most of what you need. You might just need to go out and get a wooden dowel. You can make a 3 foot tall tree out of a single 2x4. And these wooden Christmas trees are selling on Etsy and elsewhere on the internet between $200 and $300. And you can make it for just a few bucks. This is an easy beginner woodworker project, especially because I've already done the math for you. And this would be a good project to get the kids involved. Let me show you how I do it. First you gotta go find some wood. I'm using cedar decking, but you could use pine construction lumber. You could even use hardwood if you want, but that would be a little more expensive. I like cedar because it's easy to cut and shape. It's soft so it's easy on the tools. It smells good. I love how my shop smells right now with all this cedar in here. It's lightweight and it's naturally resistant to rot and to insects. Cedar is a great choice for outdoor furniture. So these spiral Christmas trees could be used for decorating outdoors or indoors. The first step is to rip your boards down into half inch strips or 13 millimeters. If you don't have a table saw, you could still make these out of furring strips. I like to rip the rounded edge off first. I look to see which edge of the board is the straightest and put that edge up against the fence. Now if you're using 2x4 lumber, you can proceed to set your fence at half inch from the blade and you'd be able to get five half inch strips out of a regular 2x4. These cedar decking boards are 5 quarter by 6. That means they're just over one inch thick and five and a half inches wide. Unlike a 2x4 which is an inch and a half thick. So to get my slats wide enough, I'm ripping my width first and then I'm going to flip each strip 90 degrees and rip the one inch thickness in half to get my half inch slats. If you're confused by that, just keep watching. It'll make more sense in a minute. If you're working with 2x4s, you can skip to the next chapter of this video and move on to the next step. But let me show you a neat little trick for dividing up a board without doing any math. Now if I were to rip these 5.5 inch boards down into 1.5 inches wide, I'd only be able to get three strips out of this board and then I'd have a strip left over that I wouldn't be able to do anything with. So in order to maximize my material, I had to figure out a way to get the most number of slats that would still be able to slide over a dowel and not break. I know that I can get four strips out of this board that will still be wide enough to fit over a 5 8 inch dowel. I've already cut off one rounded edge. That's important. Do that first. Otherwise you'll end up with one strip with a rounded edge and all the other ones will have square edges. Next I want to draw a line on the opposite edge just inside that round over. And then I'll take my tape measure, or better yet a ruler, and find a number that's easily divisible by 4. So in my case that would be 8. Then line up your rule diagonally from the outer edge to the line so that the 8 is on the line. And then make a mark every 2 inches. And then extend that line to the end of the board. Now my board is evenly divided into four sections. But before you go cutting to the line, you also have to take into account that the blade is going to cut a kerf. So if you set your fence to cut to the line, your last strip wouldn't be as wide as the other three because you'd be progressively losing that blade kerf with each cut. So you have to line up your line in the center of the blade and then set your fence. And that gets me really close to 1 and 3 16 inches. So that's my slat width. Now I need to flip these 90 degrees and rip them in half. So I need to find my center point on this edge. And I end up with just under a half an inch. That's close enough. So I end up with 8 strips instead of 5 if I were using 2x4s. Then we take these over to the miter saw to cut them to approximate length. There's a few different ways to do this. I'm trying to maximize my material, which is important if you're trying to sell these. You want to minimize your material cost and make efficient use of your time so you can maximize your profits. If you don't have a miter saw, you can still do this with a handsaw and a miter box. But that's a subject for another video. I set my miter to 13 degrees to the right. The lower your degrees, the skinnier your tree will be. If you go higher, it'll be a wider tree. To me, 13 degrees looks proportionate. Then take five strips and stack them so that the narrow edge is facing up. And stagger them a bit to make your first cut. I use a block of wood to line them up and then make a bevel cut. Would you call it a miter or a bevel? Let me know in the comments. The way I think of it is, if you're angling the saw to the left or the right, it's a miter, and if you're tilting the blade, it's a bevel. Maybe I'm overthinking it. 
Anyway, after you make your first cut, then take your whole stack and flip it. And then measure from the long point and make your mark just on the edge of the longest slat. Then slide your five strips over to the right, making sure that your beveled ends are all lining up nice and tight. And then make your cut just outside your mark. Down in the description I have a complete list of measurements, whether you want to make a three foot tree, a four foot tree, all the way up to a seven footer. I don't have plans available. I should probably learn how to create downloadable plans if I'm going to keep making woodworking videos. At the top of your screen here I have a link to Matthew Peach's video. That's where I got this idea from. He has plans available and you can save his video to your watch later list and then go watch his video later after you finish watching this one, of course. These cuts aren't the final length. We'll get to that in a later step, but this gets us close without wasting too much material. Just make sure you're not cutting them too short. Err on the long side. We're starting with the longest slats and working our way down to the shortest, cutting five slats at a time. Next, we're going to drill a hole in the center of each of these slats. So we need to find the center and mark a line so we know where to drill. Since both ends of your slats now have a 13 degree bevel, it doesn't matter which edge you use, just line up all your slats with a straight edge, and then take another straight edge that's long enough and find your farthest straight line and draw another line on that outer edge. Then find the center at the top slat and the bottom slat and connect the dots. Make a test fit with your drill bit and your dowel. For this 3 foot tree I'm using a 5 8 inch dowel and a 5 8 inch Forstner bit and that fits perfectly. If you don't have a drill press, you can still do the same thing with a hand drill. I made this simple fence out of MDF so I could stack a few pieces and save time drilling. Find the center of your slat. If it's 2x4s you're using, it should be 3 quarters of an inch. Mine is something like 19 30 seconds. Make a line on the fence and then line up your drill bit at the center point. And then line up your pieces and make a hole. I like to clamp mine to the fence so they don't shift. Next, slide all your pieces onto the dowel rod. Remember I said the miter cuts were only approximate length? Now we're going to trim it down so our edges are straight. The line we made before should be pretty close. You can just freehand it with a circular saw, or since I have one, I'm going to use my circular saw track. Now we need something for the tree to stand in. You can get creative and make any kind of stand you want. I'm going with a simple cross pattern. Seems appropriate since it's cross miss. <laughs> no? That's, that's ridiculous. Then we need to make pocket holes to attach these pieces together. Set your pocket hole jig to a half inch and we're going to be using one inch pocket hole screws. You might be saying, Brett, I don't have a fancy pocket hole jig. Well, you can fix that by clicking on the link in the description to this video and buying yourself one for Christmas. And you should. They're super handy to have if you're going to be screwing pieces of wood together.
one more step, a tree topper. Again, you can get creative here and make whatever you think will look good. I'm going with a seven pointed star. You can sketch it out with a pencil and a straight edge, or you can cheat and print one out and stick it to your wood before cutting it out with a bandsaw or a jigsaw. I'm planning on making a bunch of these, so I'm making a template out of cardboard. Well there you go. Now you can go make your own wooden Christmas tree for your own home, or to give as a gift, or make several and go make some money to go Christmas shopping with. And speaking of Christmas shopping, I have another video right here that I think you're really going to like. Go watch that next. Until next time, my friends, be safe and love each other. And Merry Christmas!